few countries, perhaps no country does this sort of thing better. Such pageantry performed with such precision, and this year, of course, matters more than most. The royals came in their carriages, the Duchess of Cornwall and the Duchess of Cambridge, with her children and a new generation learning the ways of the royal family. Significantly, for the first time in 70 years, at Trooping the Colour, the soldiers were marching without the Queen watching on. Prince Charles, his son and heir, Prince William, and Princess Anne conducting duties for her. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, dressed in the uniform of Colonel of the Welsh Guards and wearing the green sash of the Order of the Thistle and the collar, which is like a chain over his shoulders, of the Order of the Garter, followed by the Duke of Cambridge, Colonel of the Irish Guards, and the Princess Royal. They will salute the colour as they pass in respect of its importance. Reason! The annual Trooping the Colour has marked the official birthday of the British monarch for over 260 years. The 1st Battalion Irish Guards and more than 1,200 officers and soldiers from the Household Division in a display of military pageantry on Horse Guards Parade, together with hundreds of army musicians. Duchess of Cambridge looking on, it's perfect vantage there. Traditional tune, the British Grenadiers. The escort for the colour moves forward. And it will turn to face directly the colour that it has the privilege of both guarding and trooping later on. Meanwhile, the mass bands do the spin wheel. One of the most extraordinary movements on parade. Every single soldier has a different set of instructions in order to adjust the band's position by 90 degrees and still have it in the right position to lead the rest of the parade. And although it looks like they'll bump into each other, they just don't. again for Heel and Laddie as the Scots Guards march past in quick time. Many is the time I've marched into Buckingham Palace as an ensign to that tune and all the soldiers march that little bit taller. Joanna, what struck you about what we've watched unfold? over the last hour or so. It's the usual thing. I mean, it's just extraordinary to see British ceremony at its very, very best. And being the daughter of a soldier, I'm always terribly proud to see the military out, absolutely. Can you think how hard it is to ride a horse and play a musical instrument yeah. and stay in line <laughs> yeah. and follow orders? It's I, fantastic. I can't do any of those, <laughs> let alone all at so once. all of them together, it's like, you know, it's like <laughs> one of those. It's just sensational. And there's such a huge buzz of affection from everybody here. But every time the, the, um, the you know, God Save the Queen has played, everybody stands up, yeah. everybody's craning their necks, hoping to see them. After the military march, the People's March. Young and old, families from across the UK and the world, all united in this unique tribute to a unique queen. And with his mother's role curtailed, it was Prince Charles out and about shaking hands. And the Queen has come onto the balcony with the Duke of Kent. 
Many people have camped out for days to bear witness to this moment in history, and today the sun shone for them and the Queen, who appeared on her balcony alongside her cousin, the Duke of Kent. Along the Mall, the multitudes came to gather at the palace gates to say their thank yous to the only monarch the vast majority of them have ever known. And as they did so, the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery fired an 82-gun salute. It was the cue for the Queen to reappear, this time with more of the family in tow. The working royals, as they like to put it. Pride of place in the front, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, stealing the show in the nicest way with his facial expressions and within moments looking skywards at a fly pass to remember. And over comes the first wave. Wave two, which is one British Army Wildcat with three British Army Apaches. 70 aircraft flying down the Mall in waves among them the familiar sight and sound of the Lancaster bomber, the Spitfires and the Hurricanes. Perhaps one of the greatest sights of all from the Battle of Britain flight coming towards us now and for the Queen and her generation as they see this great Lancaster bomber flanked by three Spitfires and two Hurricanes. What a great sight. Look at them flying over now. The roar, listen to it, brings back Memories of 1939 to 45. Wave 12 is four Hawks. Attack aircraft. And here we are at 70, 70, wave 13, 15 typhoon, making the mark of the Queen's 70 years as sovereign. with the great salute of the three national colours. The Queen, Platinum Jubilee, Commander-in-Chief. This was a balcony picture with more than a nod to the future of the monarchy. Noticeably, no Andrew, who's announced he has COVID, and only the smallest glimpse of Meghan and Harry. Where there is pomp and royal ceremony and cameras are plenty, there is sometimes protest, and so it was today. Animal Rebellion claimed they were responsible and said they were demanding that royal land is reclaimed. They got the attention they wanted, from the police at least. Make no mistake, this was a day of joyful celebration of a queen still very much in control and apart from her mobility issues, seemingly in pretty robust health.
And if Jubilees are a thank you from the nation, then this one is special, very special. 70 years and counting. This country is likely never to see anything like this again. Mark Austin, Sky News, Buckingham Palace.